美术。Oh Allah, benefit me with what you taught me, and teach me what will benefit me, and provide me with beneficial knowledge. Beneficial knowledge. I mean, I mean. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at number one, the possessor and the possessed construction, referred to in Arabic as al mudafu wal mudafu ilayhi. The mudafun and the mudafun ilayhi construction is the relationship between two nouns, in which the first noun is owned or possessed by the second. The first noun is referred to as al mudaf. This is the person or thing possessed. The second noun is referred to as al mudafu ilayhi. This is the possessor. For example, we can say Rasulullah, which means the messenger of Allah. Or we can say Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We can also say "qalam al-talibi," which means the pen of the student, or we can say the student's pen. Likewise, we can say "kitab al-lahi," which means the book of Allah, or we can say Allah's book. Similarly. We can say "sayyara tul mudarrisi," which means the car of the teacher, or we can say the teacher's car. And finally, we can say "abdullahi," which means the slave of Allah, or we can say Allah's slave. When expressing this construction in English. We can simply place the word of between the mudaf and the mudaf and ilahi, or simply attach an apostrophe s to the possessor to show possession. This is why we say the slave of Allah, or we can say Allah's slave. Wa qala Allah Taala fi kitabihi, which means, and Allah the Most High says in His book. فلولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته لكنتم من الخاسرين. And if not for the favor of Allah upon you and His mercy, you would have been among the losers. When looking at the mubaf and the mubaf and ilahi constructions, there are a few very important points to bear in mind. For example, number one, al mubaf, the possessed, will never take al, and will never carry tanwin. For example, for example, we can say baytullah, which means the house of Allah, or we can say Allah's house. In this example, the word. Baytu is al mubaf, the possessed. It's showing us that the bait, the house, belongs to Allah. As you can see, the word bait doesn't have al at the beginning of the word, nor does it carry tanwin. As we've previously mentioned, a noun ending in the dhamma is known as marfu. And this is the normal ending for a noun in Arabic. Why doesn't al mudaf take al? Al idafa, possession, is one way of making a noun definite. Ma'rifa. When you want to specify an ism, a noun that is nakira, indefinite, you can simply add al, or by way of al idafa. But you can't use the two simultaneously. It would be incorrect to say al baytullah. This is because al mubaf should never have al 
attached to it. And similarly, it would be incorrect to say, Baytun Allahi. This is because Al Mubaf doesn't carry Tanween. وقال الله تعالى في كتابه إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح When the help of Allah has come and the conquest In this example you can see the relationship between المضاف والمضاف إليه نصر الله And if you look at the مضاف نصر you will see that it doesn't have Al attached to it, nor does it carry Tanween. The second important point is that Al Mubaf, the possessed, will only have one vowel sound at the end of the word. It can be a Dhamma, as we've seen in the previous example, a Fatha or a Kasra. For example, many times we read. And here in a hadith, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which means, O Messenger of Allah. In this example, we can see that the last vow of Al Mubaf has been changed from a Dhamma to a Fatha. This is because the Ya of calling and addressing someone came in front of the Mubaf. Insha'Allah, we'll cover the year of calling and addressing someone in more detail in a future episode. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ فِي كِتَابِهِ تَصْبِرْ إِنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقُّ Therefore have patience. Certainly the promise of Allah is true. In this example, we can see that المضاف وعد ends in a fatha. This is because Inna came in front of it and affected it. We can also see Al Mudaf take a kasra, as in the following example Fi Kitabillahi, which means in the book of Allah. In this example, the last vow of Al Mudaf has changed from a bamma to a kasra. This is because of the harful jar fi that came in front of the mubaf. For more information regarding the haruful jar, please refer back to lesson number five. وقال الله تعالى في كتابه قل أعوذ برب الناس. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind. In this example, we can see that. Al Mubaf has taken a kasra. This is because of the particle, the harf, B, that came in front of it. The third and final point to bear in mind as it relates to Al Mubafu wal Mubafu ilayhi constructions is that Al Mubafu ilayhi can have Al attached to it or it may not, but it will always be Majroor. The sign of a noun being majroor, in most cases, is a kasra at the end of the word. فَمَثَلًا For example, we can say بَابُ الْمَسْجِدِ Which means, the door of the mosque. Or we can say قَوْلُ الرَّسُولِ حَقٌ Which means, the speech of the messenger is the truth. And finally, we can say Al Ka'aba to Baytullahi, which means the Ka'aba is the house of Allah. In the first example, Bab al Masjidi, we can see that the word Al Masjid is acting as Al Mubafu ilayhi, the possessor. And as we just mentioned, Al Mubafu ilayhi can take Al. At the beginning of the word, and also the noun then becomes majroor, and the sign of a noun being majroor in most cases is a kasra at the end of the word. And likewise, in the second example, 
قول الرسول حق the word قول is المضاف this is what's being possessed or owned who owns the speech الرسول the messenger the word الرسول is المضاف إليه the possessor we can see that it begins with al and also ends with a kasra. This noun is now referred to as being majroor. And finally, in the last example, al ka'batu baytullahi, we can see that the word Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala begins with al and ends with a kasra. However, al mudafu ilayhi may not have al attached to it. فمثلا, for example, we can say قلم زيد which means Zayd's pen. Or we can say كتاب محمد which means Muhammad's book. al mudafu ilayhi in these two examples ends in kasratain. Two kasras. This is due to the absence of al at the beginning of the word. Finally, a noun can act as al mudafu ilayhi and al mudafu at the same time. Let's take a look at the following example Masjidur Rasuli, which means the mosque of the messenger, or we can say the messenger's mosque. Here we have the word masjidu which is al mudaf it doesn't have al attached to it nor does it carry tanween this is what's been possessed or owned who owns the masjid the second noun gives us the answer ar rasuli the messenger this is al mudafu ilayhi the possessor it is telling us who the mosque belongs to. In this example, the mudafu ilayhi has al attached to it and is also majroor, ending in a kasra. But what if we wanted to express the following? Where is the mosque of the messenger of Allah? We would simply say, Aina masjidu rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As you can see in this example, the word Rasuli is playing two roles. It is Al Mudafu Ilayhi to the word Masjid. This is why it ends in a Kasra and is Majroor. It is also Al Mudaf, the possessed, to the word Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. This is why it hasn't got Al attached to it. As we've mentioned in our previous points, Al-Mudaf never carries Al, and nor does it carry Tanween. In summary, we've looked at the possessor and the possessed construction referred to in Arabic as Al-Mudafu wal-Mudafu ilayhi. I hope you've enjoyed and more importantly benefited from today's lesson and I ask Allah Ta'ala that he accepts this small effort from me and from you wa jazakumullahu khaira assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh